Let's do it. For the first half of the joint, I'm going to do a freehand technique using a TIG finger to glide along. For the second half, I'll walk the cup. Both halves, though, I'm going to use the lay wire technique where the wire is left in the puddle. And since this video is under six minutes long, I'll just list all the settings and details at the very end. I used a number six cup along with a gas lens for the first pass. I'm just trying to bear down on the tip of that wire with the tip of that electrode, keeping a fairly tight arc. And because I am doing the lay wire technique, I'm putting just a little bit of pressure on the wire so that it stays in the puddle, feeds the puddle if it needs a little extra filler. For the second half of this joint, I'm going to walk the cup. And a lot of people would argue that this first pass here is not walking the cup. It's just wiggling the cup, but that's just splitting hairs if you ask me. Walking the cup is used mostly for pipe, but it is used for some fillet welds like this. And it's a valuable technique. It, it lets you be comfortable and lets you be less worn out at the end of the day if you have to do a lot of these. And it gives you a place to prop because you're propping the cup right on the metal. So what I'm trying to do here is just sort of just barely wiggle that cup. I'm not trying to put a wide weave on it. I know right here it looks like I'm wiggling it a lot. But the arc shot shows that the tip of that electrode is not moving all that much. Just enough to keep things moving. And just like with the freehand, keep the tip of that electrode bearing down right on the tip of that wire keeping just a little bit of pressure on the wire into the puddle so that it won't come out of the puddle and it feeds it a little bit here and there if it needs it. So far so good. Tapering off the amperage. Those two halves don't look all that different. Both techniques are good. Both work. There are just times when you can't walk the cup because maybe there's stuff in the way. I'm going to switch over now to a Jazzy 10 ceramic cup. One of my favorite all-around cups for stainless steel and chromoly and stuff like that. I'm going to be able to extend the electrode out plenty far where it gets it out of the way of the camera. We'll be able to see everything, whether I'm freehanding or walking the cup. For the freehanding portion, I'm going to be trying to sort of copycat the motion that walking the cup does. Basically just a little Z-weave. I'm just going to be weaving back and forth in a Z pattern, a zigzag pattern. And on this freehand half, I want to really concentrate on trying to do it uniformly. And that is the benefit of walking the cup. It seems to almost do it uniformly automatic because you're just kind of wiggling that cup and it tends to move the electrode in a very uniform pattern. But you can get close doing it freehand. And it's good to be able to do that because, again, there's just times when you can't walk the cup and freehanding is the way to go. While I'm doing this video, I'm kind of remembering working in a fab shop one time where one whole side was stainless and one whole side was carbon. They had pipe areas and they had structural areas. We did have some structural jobs that were just like this. About half the people in that shop freehanded, about half of them walked the cup whenever they could. For some weird reason, on that particular job, they kind of frowned upon walking the cup. They really encouraged freehanding. Don't know why. Well, let's finish this thing up, walking the cup with this Jazzy 10 ceramic. Cool thing about this cup is it's really good for everything. It's a good all-around cup for steel, chromoly, stainless steel, even sanitary stainless steel tubing. I don't know what happened here, this green tint. I think I bumped a button on my camera or whatever, but I thought it was a pretty good shot anyway, so I put it in here. It just looks way different than all the arc shots that I, I did for this video. And I didn't change any lenses. Something just, again, I just bumped a button, and it wound up looking different than all the rest. You can see walking the cup here it progresses you a lot more evenly than freehand typically does. That is the benefit of walking the cup. It just really gives you a nice uniform bead usually. Everything takes practice. You're not going to roll out of bed and do this if you've never done it before. But it's, it's a really good technique. And again, it's, it's especially good on pipe because of it being round.
but it's a good all-around technique to know and it's also good to be able to freehand. All right, coming up to the end here, tapering off amperage so we don't melt that end away. And there we go. And here comes the product placement of the TIG finger. No joke, you should try one out if you haven't really came in handy for this job. You can learn more about the TIG finger and the TIG finger XL at weldmonger.com. By the way, here's the machine I was using at 150 amps. This is the Prime Weld TIG 325X. Here are all the settings and details for this joint. My online store is at weldmonger.com. That is how I pay for these videos. I'd appreciate it if you'd go check it out, and thanks for your support.